So we competed in the uh, in the Top Cut Bandai Digimon webcam tournament today, and uh, I didn't do as well as I would have liked. I made a grave oversight in deck building. You know, we got into the Yellow Mirror match, which uh, you can expect to play a lot of because this is a pretty yellow dominant meta right now, and. Uh, my opponent played a Valderarm against me, and uh, I have no outs in my deck to Valderarm. So, I realized that in the middle of the tournament, um, but, you know, I still did very well. Like, I lost in the final round on the bubble, and a win there would have secured me top 32, and considering I played five, yeah, seven rounds... Yeah, I played a red player, a green player, and then five yellow players. So all of them were playing Valderarm, and uh, I got Valderarmed every game. So uh, considering that, I lost two of those games there, or I'm sorry, three of those games to the yellow players, and uh, beat the other two and or without an out to Valder. So uh, I feel pretty good about myself, you know? This deck is very strong. I'm going to take you through some of the changes that I would make if I were to bring it to a tournament again so that you can beat Falder Arm so that, you know, I can do the playtesting for you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the deck profile. Um, I went ahead and so sorted everything out for you, so we'll go ahead and hop right in. Alright, so getting into it, uh, the eggs that we play are the 4 Upa and the 1 Koro. Um, this is a Mastamon build, so Upamon is the more important one. Um, if you are playing a War Greymon focus build, Koromon is the more important one, and if you're not, Upa is the more important. That's how you should decide your eggs when you're playing yellow. On to the rookies. So, this card came in clutch all day. Bushi Agumon is nuts. And a lot of people don't like playing 4, and a lot of people are playing standard War Greymon. And so I completely understand that. Um, but this is a Mastamon build, so you are playing Bushi from your trash, and you are playing it from your hand off of Angelomon's Inheritable. So I think 4 of this card is non-negotiable in a Mastamon focus build. In yellow war, in pure Yellow War Greymon, I agree, you know, 3 is the right number. In this specific deck, you do want to play four, and if you are considering playing less than it, less than four, uh, just trust me and try it. Um, especially if you're playing three Mastermon or more in your list. So I guess I'll leave these out because it makes it easier for people to uh, see the full lineup. Um, the next rookie we play is the four Salomon. So Salomon is very important because it'll let you recover mid to late game. And uh, even early games sometimes. And I don't think four was the correct number. I think I would go down one of these to make room for the for an extra Pulsemon whenever it comes in the mail. Um, shout out to my boy Ari over on the Gaia Force Gaming Discord. Um, I will have a link to his TCG player affiliate down below. But uh, he is hooking me up with a, another copy of Pulsemon for this deck. So... Big shout out to him, because right now, I only have the two. And this is a card that every time I saw it, it just felt amazing. Um, you can manipulate your security in this deck more than you can in Standard War Greymon, so there are more times that you would get the, uh, the double effect off. So I think this card is very important. You have to play it at at least two, um, and I'm sorry if... You know, you're a budget player and you're hearing that if you're playing this deck, but uh, it's just that important to the card. And it's one of those cards that you play as many as you have sort of thing. Um, I'd tested it four before I just told you to run it at four, but I'm definitely going to play at least three. So one of the other rookies that is very important that is a little bit more affordable but not much um, is the Promo Patamon. So this card 
definitely comes in clutch, especially in combination with the promo Gato and um, the Salomon. You can just have a constant flow of recovery, and these rookies make it very, very possible to do so. Um, it's very good to get one early in trash, just so you can bring it back with Mastamon later. And the uh, some of the last yellow rookies we play, we got two Sukaimon as a cheap two cost to play. It helps get your chains going, especially if you need to play a blocker in the battle area that turn. It's easy to just play that and evolve it into a pitto. So I do like these yellow rookies. These are the 15 main ones that I evolve on top of my eggs because you know I guess they're the only ones that I can evolve on top of my eggs because the last yellow rookie we play is Lusamon. Um, I would not play more than one. Um, this card is a brick most of the time, but it is very powerful. So when you do play it, it feels very good. Um, it's just not going to do anything until you already play it once, and especially in a Mastamon build, like, you know, playing it the first time is is the is the key because you have to do it that that way with the uh with the Anjuamon and then once it's deleted the first time you can pull it back with Mastamon later on. Um or you trash it, get lucky and kinda trash it with a blinding ray or something like that, or your opponent hits it in security, but that's less consistent. Um but it is a great card. I am playing the one. I do like it at one. Um there's a glare over here, I don't know why. But uh yeah, no, it's it's a good card, and I just don't understand why it has, like, a $70 price tag, because I don't think it justifies it. It's not good enough to be worth $70, but it is it is a great card. Um, and the last rookie we play is Gazimon. Now, this card came in clutch all day. Um, the one time I was able to deal with Evolder Imar, I lowered it by 4k with a uh, War Growlmon, and then swung over it with a Mastamon, and I had Gazimon on field, so they couldn't gain the three memory with the Valder arm. So it was actually amazing. Um, I guess I did that twice today. Uh, but the one of the times I didn't have the Gazimon on field, and I had to pass turn doing it. But if I did have the Gazimon, you know, it would have felt so much better. Uh, but this card shut out Blinding Ray all day. Um, and against the Red Crest Garurumon player, this card put in a lot of work because he was playing the Memory Borrower uh, Metal Greymon so that he could get extra attacks off and put extra bodies on board. So this card kind of put him at bay. And this, if I would have played blue, this would have come up against blue. Um, these cards that just shut people out are absolutely amazing. Um, I know people are going to ask, but I never played it off of Mastamon's effect today. But I also never played against blue. So if I played against blue, I probably would have. But these are the rookies that I play. There are 17 in total, 15 of which can evolve on top of eggs. And I, uh, I like them. Again, the only change I think I really would make for this is uh, cutting a... Uh, cutting a Salomon for the third Pulsemon. And then I, am, I would actually cut the Gazimon moving forward to make room for a couple other cards that I'm going to go into at the end of the video. But I do like the rookie count. It was performing very well all day, and the rookies were not the issue that I was facing. Um, let's go on to the level 4s. I do only play 11 level 4s, and that is lower than some decks. Um, but I feel like it really works, and there was actually a couple games where I was drawing entirely too many of them. Um, we do have three Knuckle Bunny and four Pitto as the one cost to evolve into's. Um, Pitto's, you know, your generic blocker, and Knuckle Bunny is just an extra one cost to evolve. Um, it's really nice. I am, I'm not playing four, because I'd rather play a couple copies of Unimon, just because it has the five cost to play normally. Um, so if you do brick in this deck, this is cheaper to play, and... Sometimes you want to just hard play champions because you want to keep the rookies in your hand if you have a bunch of stacks with Andrew Ulmon set up. So I do really like Uni, especially in this build. Um, came in clutch all day. And then the last level four is the most important. It is this Gatomon. And this is a card I would very much consider bumping to three. Um, 
haven't play tested it at three yet, but I think once I put in the fourth Mastamon, um, the third Gato will go in because I was just recovering cards off of this all day. It kept gaining blocker and it kept just being an absolute nightmare for my opponents to deal with. And it was honestly one of the MVPs of this deck. This is an amazing addition. And this fixes the problem Yellow has, where, you know, they have great level 3s, they have great level 5s, and they have great level 6s, but every Yellow player says, oh, our level 4 lineup is pretty trash. Um, and this deck doesn't have that issue, because it can utilize this Gatomon. It is like the Magna Angemon, where you get the on-play recovery, but is one cost less, and you have a bunch of, and you have the few purple Digimon, I wouldn't say a bunch. You have the one Gazi and the three Mastamon to give it blocker as well. And this is the prime target to just pull back off the Mastamon because you just get the recovery and the blocker and it just puts you so far ahead. I do love this level four lineup and the only change I would consider making would tr be trying to find room for a third Gato. But... I honestly don't know which of the level 4s I would cut for it. Maybe another Knuckle Bunny, because I kept seeing that entirely too much, but... Eh, we'll see. Moving on to the level 5s. Uh, we have this Angelomon, which has a defensive effect, where you give something minus 2 security attack. That's nice, but the real reason you play this is to uh, poop rookies out of your hand for free. Whenever you swing... And uh, this card combos really well with Bushi, it combos really well with the Lusamon, it combos really well with the Patamon. Um, you know, the Pulse, the Pulsemon, literally every level 3 in this deck is good to play off of this card, and that is the reason we are playing 4. Um, the 6,000 DP kind of sucks, but that's why the rest of our level 4s all have 7,000 DP, so that War Greymon at least needs some other chip to eliminate it. Um, but, you know, none of my level 5s survive Valder Arm, so I think moving forward, one of these War Graumon or one of the Angelomon might change out for a Antilomon, just because Antilomon has that 8,000 base. Um, but I am playing 4 Angelomon, 3 War Graumon. Oh, yeah, God, I'll jump them. Oh, well. And then the last level 5 I play is the starter deck Angelomon, which lets you recover if you have 3 or less security when digivolving into it. And uh, a 6 cost to play is kind of nice. There was a couple times that, you know, thanks to Eli Hill, a bunch of players are playing Magnadramon now, so a couple players hard played that against me. And I was just able to evolve, or just hard play Angelomon and evolve it straight into Mastamon off of that. And that was just really good some of the times, so... Um, plus the recovery is nice. If I was going to play a ninth level 5 in this deck, it would either be a the Antilamon, or I would bump this up to 2. But, uh, the Antilamon, I think, would just be an anti-meta pick against Valder Arm specifically. I think this is generically better. But, yeah, the 8 level 5s, I really like them. They're all good cards. Uh, moving on to level 6s, and this is what kind of makes the deck tick, and uh, is the most exciting part. We got the 3 Mastamon. So, I didn't know exactly how good this card was until I played in this event. Um, I knew it was good, I just didn't know that it was, like, superb. Um... <laughs> I thought the four cost to evolve into would be like, yeah, this is good, but am I ever going to want to evolve into this over War Greymon, given the option? And the answer is yes. Um, this card, in combination with everything else that you're playing, makes the deck tick. Um, and the four cost to evolve into uh, gets mitigated because we are actually playing cards like the Kari later on. So... You can do thing, and you can pull back like the Pulse Mon and gain the memory off of that. So the four cost to evolve into is never a detriment, um, as long as you have some sort of setup going for yourself. So absolutely love Mastamon, and one of the biggest changes moving forward that I'm going to do is bump this up to four, um, just because it really helps. 
it just this is the heart and soul of the deck and if you don't have access to war graymons i suggest trying this build um and even if you do have access to war graymons i suggest trying this build because the 12,000 dp lets you hit over security um more efficiently and you know with the war Graumon, it goes up to 13k so you know you don't even have to worry about the like the vanillas and megazoo um and it's just so nice you know with any like with this a war Graumon and the Coromon, you know you can trade this with a uh Valder arm right then and there or just the regular chaos mon or a uh, ragnalord so the, the high DP matters, playing a body matters, you know, you can play a body off of this and the Andrew Woman. you can, there's so many things you can do with this card that you have, just the world opens up to you whenever you draw it, which is why I really want to go up to four. I did not see this card as much as I would have liked today at only three. Um, and the next most important level six is War, War Greymon. This card is great. Um... And it's defining the format right now. The ability to remove something, the ability to add cards to your hand, the ability to just put your security at an optimal number, uh, swinging twice, it's all amazing. The only downside to it is the relatively low DP, but I absolutely love this card. This card is nuts. Um, and the last level six of the deck is Magna Drabon. Um Like I said, Thanks, Eli Hill. Now everybody's playing this card again, but uh, I didn't like it as much as you did. I, I, I think this is a player preference sort of card. Um, it just didn't really work out for me today because every time I had this, I also had the Angelomon, and I didn't ever really have a point where I wanted to play like three rookies in a turn. Um, so I just never had, I didn't have the hand management to keep up with this card with the Angelomon. So I do think this card was, is going to be cut for a fourth copy of Mastamon so that I can make room for Millennium Mons because I am not playing this card in the deck right now. And this would be the biggest change I would make, uh, aside from going up to four Mastamon, just because... You need this card to deal with things like Valder Arm. You need this card to deal with things like Craniumon. You need this card to deal with, uh, you know, Ragnalord or any of those big threats. Um, and one of the Gazi or the Gazi would be coming out to make room for one of these, and I am going to have to find room to make or er, room to cut something for the second one. But I think two of this card absolutely need to be in this deck um right now this deck is not playing any level sevens it's just playing these level sixes as the top end and that was enough for me in most of my games you know yellow has a lot of power in rushing the board and playing a wide and tall strategy um i just think it does need the millennium on for if your opponent goes taller than you the biggest weaknesses of this deck is play is your opponent playing something that you can't deal with. Um, and that's just the way it goes sometimes, but I think that that change right there would mitigate most of this deck's problems. So, on to the final stretch, we got a double TK. This card is good early game, it is a brick late game. I think this card is still necessary in the deck, though, just because if you're set at three and you do play the Mastamon, you know, you can choke your opponent at four, or if you have the TK plus the Kari, it's still your turn. Um, TK enables War Greymon, uh, but the real MVP is this Kari here. All day, I was just playing Kar Karis down early, recovering a bunch throughout the game, and then activating this every turn. It would, well, it only unsuspends during your turn, so you get to use one on your turn, and then if you have multiples, like, you can activate multiple at the same time. You can use one on your turn with your, like, your blinding ray and keep one unsuspended so that your opponent has less memory to work with on their turn. Um, it's a play extender. It's a defensive card. 
Kari is absolutely amazing, and I think this card is much more important in this list specifically than TK. Um, I have almost considered cutting TK from this list multiple times to make room for a fourth Kari and a fourth Blinding Ray. I haven't yet, because I think TK is still necessary, as I said, but Kari and Blinding Ray are just that good that I would consider doing it. Um, I think three Blinding Ray is the correct number. Maybe I do cut the TKs and go up to a fourth Kari and a uh, second Millennium on, like, find the room that way. But uh, as of right now, this is what I'm playing. So, uh, yeah, the two matchups that I... Or, I'm sorry, the three matchups that I did lose today, two of them were the same variant of yellow... Uh, red security control. They played more rookies than I expected, in all honesty. But they had um, good yellow level fives like Magna Angemon. They and they could evolve into War Greymon or Seraphi and close out with the Valder Arm. And it was just really scary. Um, they were playing Magna Dramons and dropping Bushies off of them. So it was like a deck that played a high count of level threes and a high count of level fives and level 6s, but a low count of level 4s. So, it was really interesting to see it work, and it was just a hard counter to this deck. So I lost to that variant twice, but I did end up beating one. It was just weird that I'd never really seen this variant of that uh, control deck before, and I played against three of them in this event. So... It's just new. I guess it's a trend that is occurring here, and uh, we should just expect it now. So I'm going to give a deck profile on that in the future to kind of prep you guys for it, because it is something that we are going to be seeing a lot more in the coming or in the coming months in the set format of game. Um, and then my other loss was just a regular old War Greymon matchup. Um, he, he played very well. It was just, you know, the four War Greymon, he had a couple Magna, or he had a couple Magna Dramon, and then I think three to three or four Valder Arm in the, in the list. It was pretty top-heavy, but uh, he was drawing well, so he was getting into his top end. And like I said, this deck's biggest weakness right now is dealing with the top end. I think the two Millennium on and the Mastamon edition, or the fourth Mastamon in this deck will mitigate all of those problems. But, uh... Yeah. We'll go ahead and make those changes and, uh... Try it again at my locals this coming week. Um, but... Yeah, let me know what you guys think of the deck. Um, all my opponents were super cool. And, again, I had a... I had a blast at this tournament. Um... Thanks again to everybody that I played and the TOs and Top Cut Gaming for organizing it. Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and we will uh, see you guys next time. Bye!